welcome. Good morning. I think I'm the only thing standing between everyone here and lunch, so uh, we'll try to keep this entertaining. I'm talking about implementing and developing for WordPress in Civi CRM 4.6 and beyond. Uh, my name is Kevin Cristiano, and I've been working with Civi CRM about three years now, um, all on WordPress. I only use Drupal for testing. Um, I put this talk in with this um, topic, and I determined it to be um, a nice name, and I developed the slides. But um, in looking at it this morning again, what this really comes down to is what's new in Civi CRM 4.6 for WordPress is probably a more proper title. Um, the talk's aimed at users, implementers, and developers. Yeah, there's some code, but since I'm doing it, it's fairly light because I am not an advanced coder at all. So we're going to point out some places where you can use code and where the code is changed. But this is more about how the um, Civi CRM has become more WordPress friendly. So in an overview, we're just going to talk about where Civi and WordPress have been. Just to, I like to give a you know, grounding of where we started and where we've come through. And then the improvements. So specifically, there's been some improvements to the base page, short codes in WordPress, and the way hooks work with WordPress. And then I want to talk at the end about you know, kind of what's next. You know, what can we all do to help out WordPress and Civi? So one thing, and I had this at the end, but I wanted to bring it front and center. Um, a lot of us in the community had put in issues, pull requests, et cetera, for WordPress-specific uh, items. But Christian Wach wrote this blog post on the work he did after, I'm sure I'll mispronounce it, but the Adal Sprint, the UK Sprint last year. And 90% of, of, of the code, at least, maybe even more, is based on his work. He, he really shepherded through these improvements. And the slides are online. Um, and these links are the pull requests. So if you really want to dive into every nuance of the change, this is where you can go. So I just wanted to highlight him up front. So when I think about Civi CRM and WordPress, um, 4.1 was the first version. I got involved in it shortly thereafter. And it gave us WordPress compatibility, and it gave us some short codes. 4.2 brought the extension system in, which wasn't a WordPress improvement, but because of the way I'll talk about hooks later, extensions became critically important to WordPress. So that was a big thing for us. 4.3 was kind of the start of really being able to make robust WordPress sites, because that's when the ACLs came in. And before we had the ACLs, permissioning, in who saw what, um, was very um, basic. 4.4 petitions uh, got added to the short codes. 4.5 was one I really liked because I liked the command line. And WPCLI for Civi CRM, that's the Drush equivalent for any Drupal people in here, got implemented. Um, which made administering my servers so much easier. So I love that. But now 4.6 to me is really the, a major step forward and gives us a place to really um, take this to the next level, if I can use a silly phrase. So there's the best base page auto setup that I want to talk through, because this is something that has befuddled so many people. We've gotten more support tickets on that than anything else. Short codes in WordPress and how they work. Um, they're not new, but how they work is new. We'll talk about that. And hooks, and specifically WordPress hooks. OK, so the WordPress base page. So you know, what is this? So I think that really it comes down to the fact that in Drupal, and I really, I. I don't know Drupal 2. Who do we have in here that's really Drupal based? OK, good. So be kind to me on the Drupal stuff. Uh, uh, all my references come from my testing because whenever something's broken in WordPress, I go to my Drupal site and test it to see, is it Civi or is it WordPress? So that's my experience there. But Drupal it doesn't really have a front end. The user facing site and the admin, um, there's no real difference between front end and back end. 
and WordPress, there's a world of difference. And the way that the URLs are built are completely different on what the user sees. So in Drupal, we'll see the site name, Civi CRM event register, the ID, we get the site. In WordPress, out of the box, what do we get? Civi CRM, you know, query string, Civi CRM event register. And this actually causes some non-optimal behavior. So in WordPress, um, the page that you display your content on is determined by a template hierarchy. So if you do not have a specific page defined, it'll all the way revert back to your index.php that every theme has to show content. And more times than not, the base page, index.php, which Civi will default to in this instance, is a loop of posts, which causes some real interesting behavior. So this is, eh, it's not so bad. This is what a Drupal event would look like um, out of the box. This is what it looks like in WordPress. You know, and, be, and at the top it's fine, but if we scroll down through the page, what we can see is once we get through the content, we don't get a footer, we get all sorts of other posts and content showing up. And that's because rather than, I'll let that scroll through, rather than use a specific page, Civi out of the box, if you don't do any configuring before 4.6, this is the default behavior. Um, also comes into play on unsubscribe requests from mailing lists, which can drive people crazy trying to unsubscribe. So WordPress-based page setting will solve most of this. And on the admin side, we can define, I'll point with the mouse, Civi CRM as the base page. So under administer, system settings, CMS integration, what we can then set that. That's not it. We also have to create a WordPress page named Civi CRM, and then, and only then, will the URL change, and Civi will use Civi CRM instead of the index.php. So what does all that mean? It basically means that we won't get a loop of posts anymore. Our query string uses a defined WordPress theme page to display it. And further, we've now automated this in 4.6. So in 4 points, oh, oh, okay. We've automated it in 4.6. Sorry, I'm not seeing the slides ahead. I made my first mistake. Um, and if we want to look at this in the code, one of the things that's been done with the um, changes in 4.6 is that WordPress now has classes for all of the major changes. The base paste class, the short codes, uh, the hooks. Well, the hooks is actually a core file, but it's still got its own class, and also for user. And we can dig into the code here, but it's got its class because if a developer wants to <clears throat> override the base page setting, they can. And now that page pretty much looks like Drupal. So when we hit that page with that long URL, it looks proper. So it's, it's a big improvement and it will help developers in the sense that our user base won't be calling us about problems that they have. Did you? Yeah. yeah if, if the, if, and when it's doing that automatically, it's using the default template, right? Yes, it's using the default page template. Yes, if we go back to here, where your template is, it's, it chooses the default template by design, but you can choose any template. One thing that I talked with, but, but, oh. But in 4.6, four, in four, you, don't, you don't have to create this page, you're saying. Right, this page gets created on install. You can, you can edit it and change the default template. We talked about, I had been, in communication with Christian on some of the way we were handling URLs and it was discussed of creating our own template to insert but it was, it was pretty much decided he
got me back on the right track, that we had no idea what the themes were doing, so trying to put our own template in was like overstepping our bounds. And he was right. Um, okay, so, so that's what this does. And you know, everyone, this is better for everyone because now, out of the box, when someone first installs Civi CRM for WordPress and they go to a donate page, they're not like, what's at the bottom of my content? Okay, because that was a major issue. So, yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> when you go, so that's on install. When you upgrade from a 4.5 to a 4.6. I'll test it again. Um, every site I've upgraded, I'd already put in the base page. So I thought of that this morning, and I didn't test that before we did it today. What? It doesn't? Yeah, I think and it didn't insert that no, for you? Okay, so it's good, so thank you. So then. If you have a page, it'll just carry forward. Yes, yeah. Oh yeah, if we, if you, if this does not override existing settings. If you change the setting, it does not put it back. Okay, like it doesn't force this setting upon you. So it, you know, that's something we might want to look at this week if there's a way we could detect if it's empty on upgrade and maybe then trigger it. Yeah. You know, Yeah, it has to be, yeah. Yeah, we have to use as a way to override that. It's all well and good that a developer can override the code, but if, we're not, if we don't have a developer, we want to have them have a place where they can change the slug to CRM, you know, stuff, whatever we'd like, and do that. So I want to talk about short codes next. And uh, basically, if you're familiar with short codes, you're, you know what a short code is. Does anybody here not know what a short code is? Good. Okay, so basically, short codes have been around in all of Civi, um, or in all WordPress versions of Civi, and they've now been enhanced. Um, and all they do is a WordPress short code lets you add content to a post page or even a custom post type. So the way that this works is that when you create a new post, we have the Civi CRM shortcut button. That button allows us to add a public page. When we click on that, this comes up and we get to choose what type of page um, or what type of entity, whether it's a contribution, whether it's an event, whether it's a petition. And then we get to choose the page. Live test. We insert it into the form, and it generates the short code for you. It's a little blurrier here. I guess that's the resolution. I'm sorry. The slides are online if you want to get the exact syntax. So what this does for us is instead of the Civi URL with the query string, we can then have a URL that is civi46.dev slash donate now. And that's given out so that when we go to the page, you know, there it is, I put it on the slide, we get the Donate Now link instead of the entire, you know, unfriendly from an email communication standpoint. Yeah. I've been told that. I'm not an expert, so I'll trust you on that. So, you know, it's much better for searching. And then the page is here. And one of the other things that has changed with short codes is that before, meaning 4.5 and prior, um, the WordPress title got overwritten with the form title. So help support Civi CRM became the title of the post. We now have the ability to title our posts and have that in there as well. And we, uh, so this allows us to do that. And if we don't like that, if we want old behavior, I'll show you how we can get that back as well um, in a minute. And the reason that I think this is so great, these enhancements, is that short codes had issues before 4.6 that, for me, from my end of working with clients, weren't really obvious to me until they started coming back to us with questions. For example, multiple short codes on one page. No, didn't work. Okay? Okay. Short codes and WordPress contents on the same post together. 
unpredictable results. Sometimes it worked depending on where you inserted the short code. Most times it didn't, so we told people, don't do that, which we really didn't want to do. And the one that really got us is that if someone was creating a number of events in Civi, you know, half a dozen events, creating WordPress pages to either show the information or even the registration, and creating content, and wanting to use the WordPress archive page, my site slash events, um, the wouldn't work. So to illustrate that, oh well, not yet. Okay. So short codes in 4.6, we're allowing multiple short codes on a page, and it can either be the same page, though I still haven't figured out the use case for that. I, mean, I don't know why we'd want two short codes on a single piece of content, but it's possible. Um, or on an archive page, which that one does seem a lot more um, probable to me. So again, from the coding perspective, this has all been cleaned up. We've got a class for the short codes, um, which should allow us to extend or improve it better in the future rather than what it was. Um, and this way developers can tie into this and put that in. I know that um, for grants there are no short codes, and I was talking to Joe Murray earlier, and we're going to look and see if he can just tie into this to extend it or if there are more improvements needed here to allow us to extend it for other entity types. Because I'm not... That's for, that's for oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, so I'm not 100% sure whether it's going to work in its existing form, but his point of can we do this it really means we should make it so it can do this. We should be able to extend it. And before 4.6, this would have been our archive page. And after the first post, what we'd get, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, the next two posts are blank because the first one is overridden the page and no content appears after it. Okay. Now, when we're in 4.6, what we get is an actual excerpt of the post. Um, the excerpt appears, a link to get to the full page, and then you know, I have the empowered on. And if we scroll through this page, what we will then see is that it gets to it, and at the end, if we click on any of these links, it will actually take us to the full page and work pretty much as expected. So it really gives us a big enhancement of the way that short codes work because they're now really more working like we would expect a WordPress short code to, to work from, a, from the WordPress side of the world. Um, so that to me is the short, uh, short code. So anyone have any questions at this point? Okay, great. Okay. So now, the other thing that we had problems with, because we had a large client that was event-based, and they wanted to create content-rich pages and add a CIVI short code. And this was in 4.4. And it just did not work properly. So what, what's happened here is we have two options when we're building the short code. Override the page content, which was the default behavior before 4.6 or don't override the page content. So if we choose don't override, we can now create a page that has, you know, and I am not artistic or have good content, but it has an image above, content I want to show before this shift civvy short code, and more importantly, when I scroll to the bottom of the page, I get another area where I can put content. So for us, the best use case of this is that I have a client who wants to do an event registration. They want to have a single page for that where they create exactly what they want, images, text, above the registration, and then the form below it. And now that's completely possible. So I see a couple people nodding. They must have had some, the same issues. So this is where we don't hijack the page. And just in case we have cases where it makes more sense for us to eliminate any WordPress content, 
The override option is still there, so we can override the content, and that brings us, if we look, uh, hijack equals one is in the short code, whereas hijack equals zero um, is not to override. We now get ourselves back to the prior behavior where we end up with simply um, the civi content, which might work, this is a info page, yep, which might work better for an information page, okay? It, it's a matter of personal choice, but now we have that, okay? So <clears throat> that covers, well, I'm talking too fast. So, so that covers um, the base page improvements and um, the short codes. So, the next thing was hooks. So in WordPress, we have action hooks and filter hooks, just to bring it up on the screen. So when you, in WordPress, we write our functions and then we hook them into predefined places in WordPress. So in the first example, we're adding an action on logout to run that function. And that does stuff because in WordPress, action hooks do things maybe update a user record, send an email. Um, it, they're, they're designed so that action hooks, you're, you insert them when you want to actually you know, run code that does something. The second one is we add a filter. to CSS override, filter a hook, and then we're going and pulling in other content. Because what a filter hook does is it takes, it takes the content looks for the hook, it then modifies that input and returns it. So that if we wanted to have a, um, if we wanted to change the word civi CRM on the site to stuff, we could do that with a filter hook by filtering the content and having a simple function that did a search and replace. You know, but there are a lot more um, reasons for that. But this is the WordPress way to do the hooks. We write the, we write the function, we add it. So WordPress hooks and Civi CRM um, all had to be named WordPress underscore Civi CRM dot hook name. So we've got an example. Oh, good, it's not so bad. So the function would be WordPress underscore Civi CRM post process. So this is going to fire after a, after a form is submitted. We've got some really simple code that actually works and it's you know, built just for this. Um, to make sure it goes through and it runs here. But the problem here is that if we use this methodology, um, if I have it in a WordPress plugin, I get to use the function name only once. And yeah, if it's my plugin, I can control that with conditionals and some other methodologies to um, have, you know, it hook into multiple forms. Um, but if there are two plugins that don't know about each other, and they generally don't, and even if they know, they don't pay attention to one another, once we try to register the second function with the same name, it's just going to die. So we can't do this. And this is why earlier in the slides I mentioned that extensions were important to WordPress because the way that we found around this was to, for WordPress-specific needs, just build extensions. Then I would have the standard function that we, oh, okay, because then we would have um, the extension name underscore civi CRM underscore hook name, and I wouldn't have collisions. So if I needed multiple places to hook in, I could have multiple extensions to do that. There may, and, and let's, uh, one caveat here, there may be better ways to do this, um, if someone has more advanced, I'd, we'd love to hear about it, because this is what we found. Um, and, but more to the point is that if we have something that truly belongs in a WordPress plugin, it's, you, it's more suited, it only works on WordPress, it's using native WordPress functions that don't work quite as well in an extension, by um, you know, you, doing it in WordPress, I've seen better results. Okay, and the reason for this was that the hook utility specified that the prefix had to be WordPress in the code. 
So, okay, I've already talked about this. The Drupal, it wasn't an issue because there it hooks are all named module name underscore civi CRM hook name. And I already explained through all of why it didn't work in WordPress. So now in 4.6, changes have been made so we can hook in properly. So now this is an example of one plugin wants to set two configuration settings and they've set this up with two different action calls with two different callbacks, which allows the plugin author to now insert as many times as they need to do. Okay, and again, this goes back to pull 4360 and the hook on WordPress. Okay, and the code here is all reliant upon, as I've read through it, that we're now finally um, just like Joomla because Drupal, if you look at the Drupal hook, uh, the Drupal hooks for Civi, there's no code there. It just extends the Drupal hook system because it's exactly the same. At least that's how I read. I don't know if good. Okay. <laughs> and now what we're doing here is we're building a module list of all of the plugins to get the proper convention. And then it allows us to hook into Civi via this way. So if we want to dive into the code, it's there. So a couple of examples are, you know, from the post that they have, you know, hook into Civi Pre. We filter that, the callback. And one of the things that is important when you're adding your hooks in is we've got the insertion point of Civi Pre, the callback, and then the 10 and the 4. So what's that? In WordPress, the third parameter is the priority. And 10 is just a standard level. You need to increase or decrease the priority if you need your hook to fire before someone else's. So generally, if you want to fire late, you know, usually I use 100. If I want to fire early, I use 10. Four is the number of parameters. So if we look at what Civi Pre looks for, it looks for four parameters. So we specify the parameters there. We put our code in, and it will work. Um, I created, you know, I'm keeping it simple. I could have done this in one, but for the purpose of illustration, I did this in two. But we did a WordPress function, attach it to post process, did another WordPress function. All I changed was the form ID and put that in, and they will both work. We won't have any collisions. We could have done this a better way, uh, meaning we could have coded this so that we didn't need to. But I wanted to illustrate that it could be done. Okay, so what the heck? So basically, one of the things, just to show, one of the things that we've done, because we hook into profiles on many times to do different things, one of the things that um, is nice is our WordPress users and our Civi users get out of sync. We change the name in Civi, it doesn't change the name in WordPress. So what we've done here is I've got a name and address form. Let me just update it to make sure it's in sync. So it's got my name on it now. So if I decide to change it to Rindy and I fire it and I save the form, it comes back that we now have changed that. This, is, this hook has also fired. And if I refresh my profile in WordPress, I'm now Rindy. So it's a very simple application, but it works. And that, that's my point of this. And if we create a different form, different form ID, we can change it back to my name here. And when we go back to the WordPress profile, we're in sync. This is a kind of useless example in the sense that it just proves how we can fire two of the same Civi hooks in one plugin in WordPress separated out. Um, there's far better uses for this um, that I can see related to um, events in the future because that's really what we've been dealing a lot with. So let's go back to, yep, yeah. okay. So that's that's the improvements in the hooks. I believe that puts us near parity with Drupal and Joomla at this point, which then gives us options, which to me is um, really where we're going from. 
Any questions on that at this point? No? Okay. So, you know, what's next? I mean, to me, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we got so many people to come in here. You know, this has been a Drupal project. We'd really like to see, or I would really like to see, Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress all be at the same level so that Civi CRM is truly platform agnostic. And to do that, I feel like we have to play catch up with Drupal. One of the big things are, and it was talked about again, is one of the things when I have, we've done some conversions of Drupal to WordPress. And the Civi's basically the same, but the one thing that keeps coming up is missing is after the client's like, well, where's web forms? Oh, okay. Web forms doesn't exist. So, you know, what are we going to do about that? You know, how can we get to, say, Civi CRM native forms? which would be something that I'd like to see because it then could be the same form system that we use on all platforms that has the functionality. I don't know who was here yesterday, but yesterday we saw an, a demo of a Gravity Forms integration. Um, that's a step forward. Um, I'd rather see the Civi CRM native forms, but there's a need for a user customizable form system. So, regardless of how I feel about the openness of Gravity Forms, because it's behind a paywall, um, it may be a short-term solution. But we're making progress. And if he can hook into that via the API, we certainly should be able to do the same thing. Okay, you know, again, I mentioned it earlier, but my big idea is I want to see parity with all three CMS and be agnostic. And to me, that brings us to a bigger discussion that this becomes more sustainable. Um, by getting all three CMSs on an even level, um, we have a larger audience. You know, I've heard all sorts of numbers. WordPress has 23% of the web, according to Matt Mullenweg at State of the Word in October. I've seen stats that put, that, uh, put it as a very high, like 50% of CMSs out there. But the bottom line is it's got a lot of users. But so does Drupal and so does Joomla. So we should be looking to leverage all of that. And right now, and, you know, and I'll say this you know, easily, if, if you want to look, Drupal is the most feature-rich, most integrated platform out there today. I mean, Joomla is probably second, and WordPress is absolutely third. I mean, it can do it. I, I think so. You don't? No. Uh, uh, oh, no, I was, I was looking at uh, John. I'm sorry. For integration with CMS. Uh, we can okay, we'll talk later. later. So, okay, <laughs> okay. I think it's more. It's not because of CDCRM. I think it's more because of the CMS. Because right. we already have standard web forms, views, rules in Drupal, and we don't have yes. WordPress equivalents of these. Correct. And I guess if and that's that's a that's 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 one perspective on it, and that makes a lot of sense. But if I flip it around on the other side. Civi leveraged the existing uh, structure that Drupal had, and WordPress doesn't have that. So it, it, it's you know class half empty, half full. Just to put a, a bigger point on uh, your sustainability remark here, uh, it's a bigger market, and it's a market that's used to paying for things in a different way. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, <laughs> you're correct. That from a from a income model, yes. WordPress is used to the premium model for pretty much everything now. So you're correct. I, I like that point. But you're right. I could look at it both ways. From my WordPress perspective, I look at it that Civi's using Drupal functionality that's built in that I don't have, so I'm at a disadvantage. The flip side of that is WordPress doesn't ha isn't as feature rich as Drupal. So I, either way, I can look at it. And when we take people to WordPress and Civi CRM, they're choosing WordPress pretty much hand in hand with Civi CRM, or if they're moving from Drupal, it's because they have some issue with the Drupal site and they believe that WordPress is easier for their staff to use and fits their needs better for them. Because, but this is something I'd like to work through, and if it means putting more into Civi, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, or we're gonna to have to build some add-ons or some extensions that give this functionality just to WordPress. So a couple of things. We have about 10 minutes. 
Um, well, yeah. One oh, yeah. Um, it's, and it's not a short-term thing, but a lot of the things that you're talking about in terms of more ease with forms and the, and the customizability natively within Civi are things that I hear, we hear the core team talking about, the, and especially yesterday, in, in talk about Civi 5.0. Yes. Odds of seeing it before then, probably minimal, so. No, and, no, no. And, and, it, it's, and you're right, and I should have brought that up, but you're correct. Any of the long-term goals, it's not going to be in four-point anything. I mean, I, I can't, at least, I'm not speaking for the core team, I don't think, but I don't think they disagree that these major changes couldn't be possible before 5.0 from what I've listened into. Okay, I, yeah. Um, I think that uh, we've seen the first version in City Case uh, that Coleman and Totten put in the Angular JS kind of stuff. And um, I believe that CompuCorp has done some stuff for admin pages, which may make it into 4.7. Maybe. Okay, well, we'll see. Um, one thing I want to point out is there are a few new plugins that are f that leverage what I've talked about with the hooks um, in 4.6. And um, the admin utilities basically gives us just a nice place to be able to reset our menu and uh, you know rebuild the menu, flush the cache from the WordPress side. So because I've gotten to the point where, I've bl where a user's blown away their menu, and um, he doesn't know how to get it back. Um, and you know, this way they could go into the WordPress side and hit rebuild. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious uh, in terms of uh, parity amongst the CMSs, why this wasn't built native. I didn't build it, but that's a good point. But if we, but if we get rid of our met. We'll talk about that later because the coach could be able to be moved over, a function to rebuild. The, I mean, they have the function to rebuild the menu. We have that menu entry, so there's no need to have a native. I think the idea here is that you don't have to get into CDCR right. to rebuild the menu. Uh, yes. Because the menu, the menu but does the, not, it's blown out. Yes. Yeah. If, the, if the menu disappears from user error, from plug-in conflict, from something, we can now, we don't, if we go into CiviCRM and if we know or look up on the wiki, the URL to rebuild the menus, we can do it. This just gives us a convenience. Um, but also, uh, there's a plugin WP Profile Sync, which will now in 4.6 will keep your WordPress users' first name, last name, and email address in sync with Civi. And Civi Member Sync has been updated for 4.6. And what Civi Member Sync does is it Synchronize it, it basically based upon your membership level in Civi CRM, it will assign you a specific role in WordPress depending upon whether you are a um, new, current, or graced compared to expired, deceased, etc., so that you can actually keep your memberships in sync. This one has been around for a while, a number of people have patched it, but a full version of it is working and is up there. In addition, oh yeah? Um, one thing that always bugged me is that you don't have that left side uh, vertical bar in WordPress. Any work towards putting this into WordPress? It has come up. Um, we're talking about where it tells us the left hand vertical bar, no, tells us what. Items, quick create, oh, etc. Yeah. It would have to be, in my opinion, it would have to be in the admin only because putting that on the front end, once we're in Civi, we'd have to make it admin only. Um, I, I did look at that. Um, we were asked about that, and I tabled it for now because I'd have to find, I'd have to give up screen real estate because I have to deal in WordPress. When we go into, um, here we go. Let's see. When we come into our dashboard, Civi CRM is here, when I go into Civi, where am I going to, oh, it's working. Where am I going to float the menu? Yeah, yes, so, so what we'd have the to. The idea was if the, if the bar is retracted, then the left um, uh, column can be shown in Civi. That's, this is why. Most of my customers are, are uh, they don't like this. They would like that. Uh, okay, that's better. This one works better. So, yes, yeah, so what you're saying is, We'd have to f basically force a collapse 
and then run a sidebar in Civi. Or only display the sidebar when it's collapsed and hide ah. it when it's not. Okay. I mean, there's multiple options, but we have the screen real estate available when it's collapsed. You sure do. Current? Yeah. So I, I think the similar thing is done in Joomla. So I think you can take the same example oh, yeah. in Joomla and kind of uh, rebuild right. CV. Maybe I'll play with that this yeah. week. Okay. It's done in standalone as well. <laughs> OK. If we're already overriding with the city menu, why can't we just override that sidebar and put like a city sidebar there? I mean, you get the WordPress menu back by just clicking on the icon. You could do the, could you do the same thing? In theory, I've never hid the, um, I've never fully hid the admin menu um, myself, and I'd have to look to see how that would be done in WordPress. Well, no, but, but yeah, no, we're, we're you know what? The WordPress menu here, so we're obviously well, overriding the WordPress function. Yes, we, well, actually, I think if we look, if we really look, we're just overlaying. The WordPress admin bar is under there, if I'm not mistaken. Does anybody know for sure? I think it's, you've got a minimum, minimum subset. So if you click on the little city triangle logo, you get just a little bit. Right, but I think, let's see if it actually loaded. Um, and let's just come here for a second. I'll look down here. Let's activate this. Actually, it's behind it. Yeah, that's what I was pretty certain of because. So why couldn't we overlay the? Yeah, but oh, I can't. I don't have a good example here. But no, it should be. Th those are good ideas because you're right. We could potentially overlay this side when Civi is active as well. Just toggle it back and forth. To see it. I think that uh, one of the long-term uh, thing which might be good is uh, make menu very flexible. Saying that you can have vertical, you can have horizontal, because menu is one of the libraries which we've been using for a while now, and we are looking for changing so that it becomes more flexible and give a user option where you want to put them. Mm -hmm. It could be part of the WordPress thing too. Okay, great. So let's see what else I have. We're getting close to the end. So oh, just the um, short code buttons that I showed. One of the things that we talked about when we talked about the short code class. One of the um, one of the other things that has been done is in order to keep this um, customizable by developers, um, if you have a ton of custom post types, um, this came up when we installed BuddyPress. I don't know if anybody's familiar with BuddyPress. Um, if we start putting the Civi shortcode on every BuddyPress content type, um, not only is it a pain, it's a little bit silly, we can actually override the shortcode button so that it can only appear on the content types that you want. That's actually included in that plugin, Admin Utilities, but here is a um, link to some, some simple code that would let you override that as well. Um, one thing I tell everybody to take a look at is I watch the WordPress issues on, uh, uh, is it Jira is the, pre what's the proper pronunciation? Jira? Okay. Um, so basically I gave a short link, but it comes here and this is what we're, you know, what, what are currently out there that are specific to the WordPress integration. And please take a look at this, see who can help. Um, you know, I look at it um, more than I probably should because it doesn't change, but um, <laughs> I try to do what I can. So I'd like to ask everybody to do the same. Um, so great, that's the question. That's, the, that's what I have today. Any question? Oh, oh, thank you. Okay. Any questions? No? All right, then. I won't stand between you and lunch at this point. What? Oh, go ahead. Are there, um, in regards to Buddy Press, yeah. um, uh, are, there, are there pretty significant issues still outstanding around that, that Buddy Press integration, especially around like, security or, or? I can't talk about the security, but when I was. Um, testing back and forth with Christian on these patches, I ended up installing a BuddyPress multi-site to test these because that's actually how he works. That's his, you know, main um, work is with clients with BuddyPress and multi-site. And I can tell you that I got no conflicts, okay? And he has a couple of BuddyPress specific um, plugins and I know he hasn't done any extensions, plugins that will help with BuddyPress member sync and whatnot. Um, so it is much more compatible than it was. 
I did not, because I'm testing as an admin, I did not test on the security level there. Okay? Anything else? All right. Thank you.